That time I thought he would head into the north side of the cargo hold like he like he did last time. Maybe he's maybe he's somewhat randomized too or maybe I'm just wrong about his pattern. Or maybe I just moved too soon. Regardless, here in the north on this bottom level, you can find another holy water flask. And then as you move south down this hallway, there's another patroller to watch out for, so be wary of that. That room is about the best place you can find him. In here, they've clipped for me, so I can't get either of them, and that happens sometimes. But every day the Abysmal Gale is here, there's a possibility... Dang it. Every day that you can explore the Abysmal Gale, which are day three, day four, and day five, I think it disappears on day six, there's a possibility of getting two broadhead arrows in this last cabin. Much like... But much like the ones in Garrett's bedroom, or Garrett's den, living room, whatever you want to call it, they are prone to clipping errors, which make them impossible to get. Which is the case this time around. So we'll just follow him. Down here. I'm gonna wait for him to leave that cabin and go into the other one so I can open and close this door without any green alerts. Hopefully. We're pretty well shadowed down here. And in addition, I'm just gonna do one last attempted sweep of that room to see if I can find the uh, broadhead arrows. I saw one just then. Bam, there it is. Okay, good. So I got one of them that time. There's another one in there, but you saw the first one was pretty badly clipped and I could only see a little bit of it. Couldn't find the second one. But it's there for you to look for. So once we're through there, we move into the southern cargo hold, which is the last place we need to be. There's another prone zombie in here to avoid, so be wary of that. Here is what we came for. Ship's Manifest. Been a fine take, but nothing real exotic like the last trip. Like that golden slab with the strange symbol. Now that's a once in a lifetime thing. Couldn't seem to make a dent in it or split it up, so I took the whole thing home with me. Captain's prerogative. Edwina doesn't know. Wouldn't want her to. She'd just ask questions, and she wouldn't like the answers. That I'm less of a merchant ship captain and more of a pirate, and we only found that gold slab because we saw a cave that looked like a good place to hide some of our haul, and lo and behold, someone else must have thought it was a good hiding place too because there was the treasure. Some traps around it too. Lost a few good men that day. Edwina doesn't have to know all that, does she? Heck, she just fret and worry. Like that time she found out about the secret boathouse near the cliffs by our home. I had a real time of it trying to explain that one. Hmm. The object described in the manifest must be the compendium the keepers are looking for. Sounds like it was brought to Captain Moira's house. So... We saw a lot of things happen just then. Let's look at our objectives first. We have now completed the objective to enter the ship called the Abysmal Gale in the docks to see if it's related to the compendium of reproach that the keepers are searching for. We've completed get to the cargo hold down below, then find and read the ship's manifest for clues about the compendium of reproach. And we've added find a boat in the docks and take it to Captain Moira's seaside mansion to steal the compendium of reproach. Okay, very good. Let's take the ladder up out of the Abysmal Gale. We're done in here. Take it. And that will take us back to the docks right by the first marker or first landing, whatever it was called. So, we'll head back to the north now. 
Be wary of that guard. I'll do a real save since the abysmal gale has been cleared. That's a that's a worthwhile spot to do it, I'd say. I think we can avoid being spotted by him if we hug this landing he's on. Indeed we can. Now, as we head back to the north, we're able to completely loot the rest of the docks and everything else, which is nice. So... Up here on the left, with our climbing gloves, we can reach this gas arrow that we couldn't get to before. Now I see a city watchman. So, I'm gonna have to wait for him to... Probably gonna have to wait for him to patrol all the way back down here. So he usually stops on the stairs and turns and faces the street again. So he'll spot me if I leave right now. I need to wait for him to continue down toward the store. No one dares try anything when I'm walking the beat. That's because I'm not afraid to bend the rules a bit. Which he'll do eventually. Once we're clear of him, we can arrive here and hop up the wall. and open this door to this little apartment. In here, you can find copper coins on the shelf to the right. On the desk, you can find a silver bracelet that's 25 and 100 loot, and a note. Yup, I see more in a day than I reckon most folks ever do. Like when I was gutting that mackerel. Bet nobody will believe what came out of its belly. Nobody believes old Eli. Guess they think the salt air shriveled my thinking cap. Well, maybe it did. Reminds me of the time I was working my scrimshaw when that metal whale came floating by. Made a sound I won't never forget. There was even words on it. Cetus Amicus. You don't forget a thing like that. Breathed fire, too. So scared I nearly whittled my thumb off. So that, of course, is a reference to the Cetus Amicus from Thief 2. That's it for that apartment, so let's head down to the Pagan Territory, which is east from here. Be careful not to be spotted. Down these stairs, first things first, the torch on the left has a fire arrow in it. Listen for alerts because they're frequent here. This is the fences shop. I'll stop in later once I'm finished looting everything. But if you climb up the wall to the left, you can reach another gas arrow. Now, stick to the shadows. If you're killing rust mites, the second one in the docks, the seventh one overall, is right here. What bees that, you havers? A lettering from Diane. I'd be sticking it up here so them thiever Garrett, he be's reading it. Him? Bees I want to deading him, not leaves him letters. Me too. But Diane says him could be of using to us. Her says no kill. Not yet. Bees you think him will reads them letter? Bees not matter what I thinks. Diane thinkers him will, and Diane bees always right. So after they're done talking, you can get the water arrow out of that sewer grate. She'll take up a station right there, but if you walk far enough away, she eventually disappears. The man, meanwhile, is a patroller. He's going to head into their territory before too long. Yeah. I'm going to read the note, talk about cornerstones and why I don't think they're okay either, and then promptly disregard it and steal, their, steal everything in their area, despite the fact that they're hostile to me. So, 
Let's read the note before we do anything else. Garrett, my visioning show that it bees was you who takered them Jacknall's paw from us. This crime bees punishable by deadings, but we bees knowing Victoria would want to finding another way. We offers you this deal. First you do her some things for us, then we let you live. We have enchanting your bow so you can do us these favors. First bees many cornerstones in the city that we have readied for you to make a greening. You bees will know which cornerstones because they have greensy markings. Use your mossing arrows on them, then our magic or vines bees will grow there. Second, we bees have elemental cocoons in our territories, shaped like the crescent moon and bees the height of a man. Fire your elemental arrows into them, one of each type per day, and bees will add to their strength things. When you do one of these favors, you're standing with us bees will improving a little. You bees not attacks any us pagans, or steal from our territories, or we bees decreasing your standing with us. Now you bees our enemy, and you bees attacked by any pagan on sight. Oh, it froze again. I gotta tell you folks, that particular crash seems to be happening with some regularity. Game doesn't seem to like notes or books. No matter, I'll load the quick save and I'll finish reading the note. Then it's time to clear the pagan area. And then it's almost then we're almost done. Then it's just backtracking for the well, to clear Stone Market proper. That we haven't done yet. And to get the goodies in South Quarter that we skipped. Now you bees are enemy, and you bees attacked by any pagan who finds you on them city head streets. Bees you do us enough favors, we bees will not attack you on them streets. But bees you do us very many favors, and you bees our friend and ally. We bees let you into our territories. Bees your choice. Diane, Woodsy Priestesses. The pagans have given your bow the ability to grow vines from cornerstones marked with green symbols. Shoot the cornerstones with moss arrows. So, another upgrade. Now, let me s just peek at the objectives. We've completed the objective to go to the Doc's Pagan Stronghold and read the letter left for you by the Pagan Priestess Diane. Note, the Pagans have requested favors to improve your faction status with them. Shoot moss arrows into cornerstones marked with green symbols. Shoot any elemental arrow into their elemental cocoons. It seems to me, Again, the reasons I'm not going to do this are pretty similar to the reasons I'm not going to do the hammer favors. While this d wouldn't bust Ghost, the use of Moss Arrows or the Elemental Arrows does bust Supreme Ghost, and I still don't think that faction favors qualify as objectives to excuse those busts. Second, I don't think Garrett cares what pagans think of him. Third, makes it easier for me to judge whether or not I'm detected in their territories. So, with that in mind, Let's go ahead and clear the Pagan Territory. This, I always do a real save after the game starts crashing on me. It makes me nervous. All them stones and metal, all build it up. Sometimes I can't bees breathe for all the build it up. So he'll patrol back out here. He'll face west down the street again. We can slip into the Pagan Territory behind him. By the way, I should have pointed Death out to them, man. Woodsy King smiles on us. Back in the tavern in the fireplace where I got the fire arrow, if you're doing the I should look at the map of the docks. I haven't gone over that, have I? Here's the map of the docks. Here's where we came in, the entrance to South Quarter. The northeast <clears throat> is the passage to Old Quarter, which is still sealed off to us. Right now, we're here in this southern territory. This is the fence, we'll visit her later, and the pagan territory is here in the southeast. Here in the center, right by the entrance to the South Quarter, you see the sewer entrance. That red handprint is the undercurrent where we already bought the climbing gloves. Here in the center, that canoe it, you see there is the boat we'll take to the house of Widow Moira. Here in the southwest <coughs> is the abysmal gale where we've already been. And here in the northwest is the tavern, which we've also already been to. The fireplace on the first floor of the tavern is where you can burn the sapling if you want to complete that little side mission for the Hammerites. Now, when you enter the territory, to the right, you can find a moss arrow. You should be able to get across this bridge undetected. 
forward from the bridge. And I don't know exactly where this guy patrols. I'm... Air smells. That is the elemental cocoon. It, every day, you can fire a water arrow, a moss arrow, a fire arrow, and a gas arrow into it. And each one will improve your faction standing a little. I got that second moss arrow. I will now also point out the cornerstones and tell you where you should be if you have decided to moss the cornerstones and help out the pagans. I don't know. I still have a grudge against the pagans left over from Thief Gold. Sure, they might have allied with me toward the end of Thief 2, but they're the bastards who took out my eye. Kind of have a... The Hammerites! I don't really have a grudge against them. They weren't the Mechanists in Thief 2. And in Thief Gold, they never really did anything to me either. In fact, they were my allies in Thief Gold. So anyway... Air smells. When you move into this tavern building, you can get a flash bomb off the table. <coughs> Over here, on the bar... You can find a couple of pieces of loot, a copper coin, and a jade necklace worth 25 hmm. and 50. I think there's something might be missing. Heal yellow alert to them being gone, but that doesn't matter. You see that patch of ground with the green lights around it? That's where you can. Goodsy day, friend. That's where you can plant the sapling. Ah, be something hiding there. If you want to complete the side quest for the pagans. And there's something to read on the bar as well. Juniper, them sapling tree bees held by the city fools on the docks. Now's we just needering a plan to get see past them guards. And soon, Diane bees making a place readies for them saplinger to grow. Shaman Hyssop. So with that done, we want to head up these stairs. There's a shaman up here who will want to pickpocket. Because I always like disarming the shamans. But on the table, there are two noisemaker arrows stuck in the side. And there's more to read on the table directly. Hyssop. You will get them sapling or tree. Bees a rare centuried plant that will helping us. When you having the sapling, bring her it to them abandoned inn here's in our territory and docks. There bees a patch of ground there I blessed. Plant them sapling there and it bees will bring her us them powers rooted in them deeping earth. Diane. So you can just creep up behind her after she moves over here. Nab the wand. <coughs> uh oh. Is there a picky <coughs> around? Wait until she gets all the way down to the other end. I'm going to try to drop it on her patrol route without an alert. No dice. And of course, failure on the first attempt means that we will, by default, succeed by using the glitch. If you screw up the first time, there's no way around the glitch, and it happens to solve your problems. Anyway, we can pick this open. Left down, left up, down. Open it. Inside. Copper coin. And silver coin. And close it. All with no alerts. Leafy Lord. So with that, the docks are clear, and I am going to head back to South Quarter. You kind of just... It's good to get lucky on the timing coming out of there. Sometimes I can't bees breathe for all the build it up. So I'll head across the bridge now, since he's headed over there. I'll wait over here to the east until the pagan comes down and looks 
hangs out in that spot and looks west. And I'll just sneak up the stairs behind him to get out of here. <coughs> uh, the docks are clear now. There's a little bit of loot in South Quarter. Plus, I need to point out the cornerstones to you and the last couple of rust mites. Like I said, I haven't covered any cornerstones yet, but we've been by seven of the rust mites if you were out to kill them. All three in South Quarter, two in Stone Market Plaza, which is to say all of the ones in Stone Market Plaza, and two in the docks. There's one in the docks and one in Stone Market proper I haven't shown you yet. As far as cornerstones, our first one is just out of this section, right here on the right. That's the first docks cornerstone, it's also the first overall. The other two are over there, I'll show you those when we're on our way to Widow Moira's. In the meantime, open up the passage back to South Quarter and roll on in. I'll do a real save here just because clearing the docks for the first time is a pretty ambitious endeavor and I'm glad it's taken care of. Now, cornerstones. Gotta wait until I can move without alerting any watchmen. Which might actually take a bit, but... It'll actually behoove me to head down this way. So, right by the main gate to the docks, right there is the first south quarter cornerstone the second cornerstone overall. Coming through, common folk. Wait for him to turn around and head back, then we'll cross over into Black Alley. Show you why. <clears throat> Here in Black Alley by Heartless Perry's. Well, yeah, actually, right by Heartless Perry's just between the store and the fence. Here is the second south quarter cornerstone. It's the third cornerstone overall, if you're choosing to moss them and ally with the pagans. Standing there like that. One of these days, I really ought to work up the nerve that- Hey, how are things? So now we'll go through here, back towards Stone Market. First, up above, right above the little tunnel into the watch station where Lady Elizabeth had her money, you want to climb this stone wall, this little narrow strip. Mantle up here. <laughs> climb all the way to the top. <laughs> and up here you find an attic. In here you can find a bottle of fine wine worth a hundred. And inside the chest, you can find two flash bombs. You cannot get up here without the climbing gloves. Now I'm going to climb back down the way I came, which is easy enough to do. Just sort of move backwards and then run into the wall and Garrett will resume climbing. Which is what you want. So, head towards Stone Market. Here at the bottom right of the arch is the last south quarter cornerstone. It's the fourth cornerstone overall if you're following me and you're mossing them. Into Stone Market Plaza. So 
here in Stone Market Plaza. Did something just move? I figured that was going to be a problem. I'll just wait and slip past him. Stealth and patience instead of speed. You can just wait right here and then when he gets to the end of his little route, you can slip up the street behind him. Evening. Evening. So anyway, from from the south quarter entrance, if you head north, straight past the tavern, and then head here to the east, right here is the first stone market plaza cornerstone. It's the fifth cornerstone overall. Get under that arch. Let's move towards the transition to Stone Market proper. Give the city watchman a wide berth as usual. Here in the passage behind the tavern, you see the second Stone Market Plaza cornerstone. It's the sixth cornerstone overall. <laughs> Let's head into Stone Market proper. Here we are in Stone Market proper. Keep in mind that Hammerites are hostile to us. So, first, let's look at the crime report for Stone Market. City Watch Crime Report, District of Stone Market. The following criminal incidents occurred last evening in the vicinity of Stone Market. Zero citizens were murdered. Zero citizens were rendered unconscious by a blow to the head. Zero items of valuable property were reported stolen. Five locks were unlawfully picked open. The above is a true and complete record of events. All residents are encouraged to report suspected incidents of crime to the nearest City Watch authority. Signed, the Office of the Commissioner. All right, easy enough. Inside the watch station, same as before. Two broadheads up on this shelf, and one silver coin in front of the guard, which will yellow it alert him when we take it. Itself. That's a loot total of 50. We'll just wait for his yellow alert to settle. Well, no one there. Oh, quiet. Uh oh. Now we'll break right. Inside the donation box outside St. Edgar's, you can still find three gold coins at 75 each. Then, as we head back toward the illegal establishments, you can find a fire arrow right there. Here in this alley is the only rust mite in Stone Market proper. That should be, it's the last one in Stone Market, and it's the eighth rust mite overall. Up the steps from Black Market Bertha, there's a water arrow, same as always. Now, unfortunately, and across from this exit, right at that corner, you see the one cornerstone for Stone Market proper, the last cornerstone for Stone Market, it's the seventh cornerstone overall. So at this point, if you're doing the favors as I point them out to you, you should have killed eight rust mites and mossed seven cornerstones. So creep down from here nice and quiet. Grab the moss arrow underneath that tree that's always there. Now one thing to note is that the balcony is no longer an option for us with a hostile hammer right, right there. So we will have to take the supreme bust that comes from opening this door. We'd have to take a supreme bust anyway, but you, you get what I'm saying. Green alert, no problem. Upstairs in the stone... Upstairs in the stonecutter's house. There's a copper ring on the end table worth 25. 
downstairs. The green alert should have settled by now, so I'm gonna close the door. Did I hear that? Yep. Well, I get... On the table here, there's a ruby and a stack of silver, a pile of silver coins, 125 and 50. Now we have to time our exit here carefully as well. There's now a hostile Hammerite patrolling around. And he said I got this here outside. puncture wound, as he calls it, due to bad humors trapped in my guts. Sounds serious. Not if you catch it in time, no. So you're cured then? Oh no, no, it's gone all squirrely and black. Doctor says could be monk. <laughs> oh, what's making that Dang noise? It. I forgot about that. The second conversation between Benny and his friend is here in Stone Market proper on day three. Makes the timing even trickier because... People will alert if this door is standing open. Well, I've been to doctor like you told me. And? He said I got this here puncture wound, as he calls it, hey, due to bad humors trapped in my guts. Okay, well this is a little bit more complicated than I'd bargained for, mostly because I can't actually survey anything. Let's just listen at the door until the conversation ends. That'll be my first step. Humor's trapped in my guts. Sounds serious. Not if you catch it in time, no. So you're cured then? Oh no, no, it's gone all squirrely and black. Doctor says could be months before it stops festering. <laughs> okay. Now they're done. And they should disappear. The hammer should be the only thing we have to worry about now. Oh, oh dang it. My own echo. Yeah, it's nothing. Oh, Just try to relax, will you? Oh, it's gonna be a long, long night. Alright, well let's get far enough away to make them disappear. Hopefully. Otherwise I'm gonna have to skip a gas arrow. There, good. They disappeared like they're supposed to. Now I'll close this door, because the Hammerite will notice that it's open. So, we can now get the gas arrow above this lamppost. Then, down past Catherine's armory. As usual, there's a moss arrow, but the hammer right here. I'm gonna wait until he heads back behind the apothecary again. What is going on there? Check it out. He's taking baby steps. That's weird. I mean, like, super weird. That's crazy. <laughs> kind of funny, though. It's cut his patrol speed in half, which means we have to wait longer now, but it'll give us more time later, so... I guess like most... like many glitches, I wouldn't say most, it's a mixed... Oh! Now he's back to full speed. Okay, good. So we can slip out behind him, grab the moss arrow out of the tree, and then once he's far enough away, we can head into Cothran's armory to loot it. Really quickly, two broadhead arrows on the crate, and inside the safe, up, right, left, S pile of silver coins, as always. Now hopefully he won't notice the, uh... Catherine's armory door standing open. Otherwise, I could be in trouble. I don't think he will. 
And when he's far enough away, I'll close it again and head back through the stonecutter's house. We're done now. All that's left is to head back to the docks. I'll point out the last two cornerstones and the last rust mite. And that'll be it for day three. Big day, a lot to do, a lot done. So back into the house. Let's open this up. Where's that? Wait for the green alert to settle. Probably just heard the echo of my own footsteps. <laughs> Close it. Huh. Nothing. Maybe some random sound. <clears throat> now... We can creep across here. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Apologies for the sniffles and coughs and all the other noises you hear from me. So, let's try something else. Now that we've stolen everything we can steal on this day, I'm going to visit Bertha. Always nice to see you, G. Sell her my metal and gems, 1700 worth. Oh. <laughs> that leaves me with 3500 of artwork, but I can finally offload that when I get back to the docks. So, just be wary of the wretch. Just be wary of the hammerite. Creep across here. Get to the exit back to Stone Market Plaza. Excuse me. I'll just head around behind the tavern and get back to South Quarter. All pretty, pretty straightforward. We'll just head straight through South Quarter to the docks. Remember the patrolling watchman over here. He's no no trouble really, but you just have to time him to get safely to the exit. through the docks. Now that we're in the docks, there are just a couple of little things to do to wrap, finally wrap up day three. Huge day. The game really... Your amount of things to do really expands on day three. But I'm gonna visit the fence. We can finally sell all the artwork we haven't been able to do anything with the entire game. Who's that? Let me get a look at you. 
You must be that fella Garrett. Fancy yourself a famous thief I hear, but that don't impress me. Anyway, famous or no, old Dahlia will take care of you. If you've got artwork to sell, this is the place. But no funny business, got it? Let's sell all that. Sure is a lot of stuff, Garrett. You probably think I should be grateful for the business, but it means a lot more work on my end. A lot more work. And with that, we have finally offloaded all of our loot. We are just drowning in cash, and there's almost nothing left to spend it on with the climbing gloves and three of the practice locks. The only thing left I'm ever going to buy is the gold practice lock in Old Quarter when we finally get there. So homie's going to turn. We can then get past him. get past these two again, back toward the Abysmal Gale, very briefly. Because... Right there, across from the door to the tavern, is the second cornerstone for the docks, the eighth cornerstone overall. If you're really keeping track of totals that I've shown you so far, you should be sitting at eight rust mites and eight cornerstones. Now in this little passage, right there is the last cornerstone in the docks. It's the ninth cornerstone overall. Now wait until this guy is heading back down to the east and then follow him. But don't follow him directly, follow him up here. You'll notice, down at the end of this little passage, a rust mite. That's the last rust mite for the docks. It is the ninth rust mite overall. And he's headed away. That's an excellent spot for a save. It's a pretty good spot for a real save because this is the entrance to the next mission. We have finally arrived at the end of day three. Thanks for sticking with me. I will see you guys next time for the House of Widow Moira. That's it for now. Bye-bye.